Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week, as always, is... Hello, I am Namio. What? And, oh, this week... <laughs> so much. So, uh, uh, so much of... For starters, Rafe is an asshole! Yeah, it's like... <clears throat> At first, he was like, okay, you know, he's, he's been traumatized, victimized by his dad, by his dad killing his mom, and, and then all of that going down, and then he needed a friend, and then, you know, Silas comes in and try, you know, wants to take custody, and and then is just, just sent all these things happen to him. Now he's turning into a grade A douchebag. Douchebag. He's like, dude, what the fuck, man? And, and, and here is how he does this, all right? He see he saw uh, Molly and TJ at the hotel. You know they had a little confrontation, and TJ's like, "Well, let's mind your own business." So, um, so Rafe goes off, tells Kiki, who's supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to be having dinner or something. He tells Kiki, "Yeah, I'm gonna go and do go some walk, do some walking or whatever," and he goes right to Alexis, who is about to have her own little thing with Julian. Yes. He's like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, and he's like, Molly's gonna have sex, and Alexis freaks the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I'm, and and Rafe is still, you know, you know, hanging out because you know he stayed behind to keep an eye on Danny. Of course. And he's still like talking to himself, like, she'll thank me one day when she realizes that I'm the right guy for her. And I'm like, you fucking dick bag, God! You just how many times? Her. How many times has she said no? No means no. Is, like, no, no. Do not be like your father, who, if I'm remembering correctly, had very, very, had, had a lot of trouble taking no for an answer. So do not be him. <sighs> just do not be your father. Be more like your uncle, who is cool and awesome. Yes. But yeah, Alexis gets over this. She and Molly have this fight. TJ tries to interject, and Julian's like, uh-uh, back off. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, and of course, Molly throws the fact that, you know what, at least, you know, yeah, she's having sex and trying to have sex at that age, but Alexis did the same thing, and she wasn't safe. Yes. And, of course, Alexis being, I, I, I will admit, slightly irrational. Because it's like, yeah, you, you you want to protect your daughter, you don't want her to make the same mistakes you did, but um, she wasn't making the exact same mistakes you were. She was ready. She was doing it on her own terms. She wasn't doing it just because she was getting drunk after getting, you know, after going to a bar. She was fully in control of what she wanted to do, you know, of, of her Ooh. mind and her body. They insisted on protection, and then they went somewhere where they both felt comfortable. Yes. And you know what? More power to them. And I think once Alexis calms down a little bit, she's probably going to see that. Yeah. So, or at least I, I really hope so. Yeah, it, it's hard to tell, um, you know, Alexis... <laughs> <laughs> She, she, Alexis has, you know, sees the world in uh, her own special way, and there are some things that she rationalizes and some things she refuses to rationalize, and she's not terribly consistent about what those are. Yeah, I don't know if that's so much of a character choice or the writers. I, I don't know. I don't even but, know uh, either, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's like, yeah... And of course, so while while Molly and Alexis are on their way back home, Julian sticks around a little bit to talk to TJ, and all he told him was, you know what, you should really go to the cops about the warehouse thing. Tell tell them exactly who shot who, you know, and and don't worry, you'll have another chance in a few years, you know, that sort of thing, you know, and nothing threatening, from what I gathered. You know, it was basically just... Well, it was it was an implied threat. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he's... You know, Julian's not stupid. He's not gonna say, uh, do what I tell you or else. 
but he's going to heavily imply, do what I tell you or else. Yeah. So, so yeah, but after all of that happened, um, Molly and Alexis come home, and, oh, look, Rick! <laughs> Sonny's half-brother and Alexis's ex-husband and Molly's father. So, Alexis had a child with both Sonny and Sonny's brother? And Sonny's enemy. Well, current enemy. So, so all three of her children's fathers are mobsters. Basically, yeah. But at the same time, she couldn't be with Sean because he was working for a mobster. Yeah. It, it's... It, it... Ugh! See, see, this is what I'm talking about, inconsistency. Mm -hmm. but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I I, I I seem to remember watching like a time or two where she would she would acknowledge it's a problem with her, but sometimes you know her 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 clitoris gets the better of her. <laughs> so yeah, oh Jeebus. But yeah, and Rick's back, and of course he's thrust right in the middle of this fight between the two of them, and he takes Molly's side. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Good on you. Good on you, dude, because that that's the actual proper thing. Molly is, yeah, she's shrieking and screaming as well, but, you know, her thought process, she is being mature. She is, she yes. is being more of an adult about it than Alexis is. Very much so. I mean, Alexis, I love you, but, you know, you know, you know, use that brain. You used it to get through law school. Come on. I mean, <laughs> I know, I know your family didn't pay for everything. Oh, jeebus. Uh, so, of course, Rick is around, and it's being hinted at that Rick is the one who's financing Julian through, uh, what was it, uh, Barrett Enterprises, which was owned by, was owned by Brenda's sister, Julia, and come to find out Julia sold, sold you know, her, the majority of her, you know, her majority share in stocks or whatever to somebody, but didn't know who, and Sean seems to be, you know, you know, Sonny suspects that it's Rick after meeting him and, and having a talk with him. And I think Sean has been looking into that. And, and but, but, you know, it's just, they, they hint at it. You know, yes. uh, Julian or Rick getting on the phone or off the phone at just the right moments. And with the way that they do the editing where they hint at, you know, where they talk about somebody, you know, either directly or indirectly, and they cut to that person, <coughs> you know, the, the, all of it is pointing to Rick being the financer and, and the backer for Julian Jerome, which I will admit I didn't really see coming. Because I think it was like last time, I was thinking, oh, it's, it's probably Victor or or, 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 or Obrecht or, or, or somebody else. I didn't think about fucking Rick Lansing. See, I didn't even know who he was. You know, They did the reveal, and I'm like, okay, the music is telling me that I should know who this is, but I don't know who this is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, Rick, I think he was DA a time or two in his day. Um, you know, he's, he's, you know, obviously he was married to Alexis for a little bit, had a child with her. Um, I know there was a bunch of stuff that happened while I wasn't watching involving the Sakaras. And in, in doing some little research on Rick before this show, I found out that one of the things he did was he actually raped somebody. Oh, really? Who? Uh, a girl by the name of Claudia Zakara, who I believe was one of the Zakara family that was in at war with Sonny at one point or another. And and it's like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, one thing, one thing that uh, I like about General Hospital is they do make an effort to give you the backstory. And so Olivia actually did this huge exposition dump. When she uh, confront, you know, found Rick there, and uh, Claudia was one of the people, was one of the names that she mentioned, uh, but I didn't, I didn't know who she was. Yeah, she is one of Sonny's many wives, lovers, also <laughs> one of the, one of the members of the Zakara family, like I said, you know, that was at war with Sonny. It, it's, it's something you might be a little bit better off going and looking at the GH wiki at this point because I didn't look too deep into it. I just looked more into Rick's part because I knew I'd be talking about him a little bit. 
And, um, but yeah, and, and of course, Olivia's big exposition dump there, and she well, wanted to toss him out. Because, yeah, and I thought, at least based on what I read, I thought Rick had left on at least semi-decent terms for the most part. You know, obviously. Apparently not. <laughs> but I guess not. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it was, it's this whole big thing, and and of course, Sonny came by to talk to him, and Rick's, you know, he's just saying, yeah, I'm just there to see my daughter, you know, even though he hadn't been to see her in five years, even though I don't remember if anybody else knows it. I seem to remember Molly mentioning that she talks to her dad on occasion, like over phone or Skype or something. Speaking of the hotel, I, men I mentioned Kiki in passing, and she and Michael had their little fight. I, I say little fight, and Kiki's just simply not moving back in with Michael for right now. Yeah. You know, they still have feelings for each other, but, you know, they just need some distance, because it's like, both, you know, because of the whole Franco ordeal, and and it's like, both of them are expecting the other to apologize, and it's like, no, nah, I, I, I think you both should apologize for things that may or may not have happened, at least, you know, make good on it, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say, uh, you know, I'm really glad that they're not breaking up, because they're really cute together. Uh, but I do think that Kiki is right because you know the thing is is they got together and they started living together pretty much right away because Kiki didn't have anywhere else to live <coughs> and that is that's not very smart yeah uh, you know I, I have uh, actually watched uh, I actually watched uh, uh, some friends of mine do that. Also, due to necessity, they'd been dating for, like, maybe three months um, when one of them lost, um, you know, living arrangements suddenly, and they moved in together, and it was a bad idea. And eventually, they did exactly what Michael and Kiki are doing. They, you know, w moved out, uh, were still together, but lived in separate places for a while, and, you know, let the, let the relationship mature before they decided to finally come back and live together again. And so, I, I, I it's it's kind of nice to see that uh, playing out somewhat realistically on a show that is often quite unrealistic. Yes, and of course, since you know Kiki's needing a needing a place to live, she goes to you know uh, Maxie's Maxie's place. Well, I I can't say old <laughs> place because I think Maxie's going to come back to it. Yes. But, um, and oh, look, there's Nathan. Very, very, very fan servicey Nathan. Like, I just, like, when he came on screen and he's, like, doing sit ups with a, you know, a weight shirtless in his living room, I'm like, I just, this is hilarious, this level of fan service. Yes. <laughs> don't ever, and don't then, ever think that daytime TV does not give you fan service. And then, you know, he, uh, he answers the door, like, in nothing but a towel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, of course, they, 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 they have the, the talk. He shows her the file. She looks through the file, and she's like, you know, this doesn't prove anything. Silas and Sam are in New York trying to clear his name. And then realizes, oh, shit, I should not have said that to him. Yeah. Because this guy, I, I will give him points for, in, you know, for being persistent. But it's, it's <coughs> like, dude, you, you have this in your head that, that he is so guilty without any, you know, anything but circumstantial evidence that could very well have been forged. Yeah. So it's, of course it's, it's like, dude, you know, think about it, clear your head. You know, and if and if you're actually too close to Nina or Silas, you know, you know, if you're like related to them or something like that, then you need to back the fuck off and give it to Dante and say, look, you know what, that this is this is compromising, this is compromising me in some way, this is affecting my job, how I'm going to do this, you know, give it off to somebody else. But no, he's not going to do that. Nope. Oh, and yes, they, you know, Silas and Kiki do make it to New York. They start, they start, you know, talking to Delia, who's all in, like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll help put Kiki away, yeah. you know. Yeah, Sam, Sam and Silas are a little, like, 
you know, worried that Delia might not be, you know, up for this, but Delia's like, no, no, I'll still leave it out right away. Let's do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, when your daughter abandons you, practically abandons you when you, I mean, when you reveal to her that her biological family is a powerful mob family, of course, you know, you're going to be a little bitter. Especially since she doesn't send her granddaughter to visit you or give you any updates about her or what have you. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, that, that's, you know, you're going to want to do something about it. Plus, mm -hmm. if, if Ava really is is guilty of trying to murder uh, Nina, as she is, as Silas thinks she is, which I wouldn't be surprised if he was right, then, yeah, she deserves to go to prison, regardless of blood ties. And yeah. I think that's a good thing. I think that, I think, yeah, would it be difficult on her? Uh, who knows? Uh, they don't seem particularly close. It's so maybe not very hard, but, you know, having to put your own kid in jail, you know, that can't be easy. So, mm. so they set up, so they set up a dating, a date with this Nakamura guy, the, the, the pharmacist, you know, because he had to think for pretty blondes. And <laughs> they get ready for the date. The day of the date comes around, and and guess who shows up? Ava. And why is Ava there? Well, she needs an alibi. What does she need an alibi for? Well, let's go back to the previous night where she and Carlos were at the floating <laughs> rib. And they they just have this kind of info dump with each other, you know. You know, Ava to, he pretty much confesses to Carlos. Yeah, I, I killed her because. Not because of the ELQ thing, not because of anything else, but because she could have blown our cover. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, you, you kind of wondered about that, because Connie was, you know, sitting there putting two and two together, and, you know, suddenly she did. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think, I think I've said before, you know, the only real twist would have been if AJ actually was guilty. Yeah. You know, it's one of these things, you know, that the, the, the only uh, real twists in this show would be if people, it would be if the, you know, story was straightforward and not <laughs> <laughs> horrifically complicated. But, you know, yeah, she tells Carlos, you know, uh, I killed Connie with AJ's gun and then, you know, to make sure his fingerprints were on it and not mine. I, you know, found him when he was passed out, uh, you know, wiped my prints off of it and put his on it. And, uh, and so, you know, but now she's worried because AJ seems to be remembering things and she can't risk him remembering that he didn't kill Connie. And so she wants Carlos to kill him, uh, make it look like a robbery gone wrong. <coughs> Uh, uh. That, that ends up going a bit south as well, because as Carlos is there with the gun on AJ and everything, Tracy and Luke arrive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, they save his ass, because it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, AJ may be, you know, he, he may be a screw-up, but he's our screw-up, damn it. <laughs> uh. Oh, jeebus. <laughs> uh, which brings us brings us a little bit around to uh, Carly and Franco. They didn't they didn't have a lot of time this week. But, but they were super cute. Yes, yeah, basically saying, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Carly's like, you know what? I'm not giving the fuck up on you. You know, and and, and, he, and he's sitting there like, no, don't compromise your family for me, that sort of thing. Just don't do it. Uh. <coughs> uh. And a, the scene between Carly and Tracy... <laughs> Tracy just bitches Carly out for forgetting about Luke, and Carly's like, "Bitch, I was buried alive." You know? Yes. Can you can you, can you blame me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Luke even stuck up for her, but like, yeah, hi. You know, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Luke. Oh, Luke. you know what? I I really feel like Carly was one of my favorite characters this week. Like, surprisingly, you know. I, I'm not usually uh, her biggest fan, mm -hmm. but she was pretty awesome this week, you know, between being super, super adorable with Franco, 
you know, uh, you know, holding her own against Tracy and bitching Robin out, which was amazing. Yeah, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I wanted. I am mixed on that one because on the one <laughs> hand, yeah, she she does have her own points, but at the same time, it's like. Uh... I don't know. I was get, of course I was getting really pissed off at Robin this week. <clears throat> you know, cuz the the week started off with uh her and Patrick uh having one last night of dirty sex and <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm and the thing is is you know they b- b- before they do the dirty, there's you know standing there and you know Robin keeps going, you know, Patrick is really not wanting to have sex. He is still very upset about her leaving. And she starts going off about how I need this. I need this memory. I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 I. And I'm like, bitch, you are not the center of the fucking universe. And like, she just kept going on and on, and he just relented. And, you know, as, you know, she's kind of doing her going through and, you know, saying goodbye to everybody, it's still I, 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 me, me, me. You know, with a little bit of Jason thrown in there, but mostly I, 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 me, me, me. She was going to leave without saying goodbye to her mother. Yeah, that's kind of uh, that that's uh like I don't care what kind of like you know high minded uh you know noble reasons you think you're doing this that is not okay and you know what I I had to applaud Patrick for calling Anna behind Robin's back yeah <laughs> and they had their and Anna and Robin had their goodbyes and which which was touching Yes, but lie. yeah, but in <laughs> in the middle of all that, to have Carly, you know, first trying to hold out an olive branch, and then then changing her fucking mind and being like, you know what, you are a selfish, self centered person, and you suck. I was cheering for Carly <laughs> at that point. I really was. <clears throat> uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, when Patrick comes along and he's kind of like, you know, she she wouldn't be saying that if she knew. This is about Jason, you know, whatever, fine. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? Go, Carly, <laughs> rub Robin's nose in this. Because she uh-huh. is. She's being incredibly selfish. Yeah, I, I <sighs> definitely. It, it, in, in terms of how she's leaving and, 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 and all of that, yeah. I can see the circumstances leading it does because she can't just come out and say hey bitch look I'm going to go save your best friend okay or well our best friend because I, th- I think they both can lay claim to best friend when it comes to Jason so so you know she just can't come out and say it unfortunately but at the same time <coughs> it's like I, I think Robin you know for, for all of her faults and all of her errors in this she is in one of those predicaments where it's like, yeah, I, I've got to be this certain way. Otherwise, you know, people will suspect and the WSB might just, you know, you know, make them disappear for a while. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's not the good, it's not a good attitude and, and it's not a good way that Robin is written here. I don't think so, at least. Not that, she, not that it's not written well, it's just not written in, in, in a good way, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah, no, I I agree. I, I think if uh, if the white writers had their druthers, she wouldn't be leaving. She would be staying, and things would be getting complicated in town. You know, they, they had to find a way to, you know, you know, for her to leave, because, you know, the actress has her own shit going on. Yeah. But I'm just like, <clears throat> you know, the way the character is written right now, I really just want to punch her in the face, and... So it was uh, nice of Carly to uh, verbally do that for me. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, and 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 I could understand. And, and again, this comes back to understanding both sides. Because yes, Robin, like like with the sex and the lovemaking, yeah, it is very selfish of her to 
to make to center it around what she needs, you know. There, but at the same time, it it also works well for Patrick too because neither of them know how long it's going to be before they're with each other. At that in that way, and <coughs> I mean, and to to yeah. get a little personal, it was it was similar when um, when I went to Magfest. Um, that that you know that last night, I I I'd spent it with my girlfriend, and I told her, you know what. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do this, and I want to make sure that you know that this is something we both will remember. You know, something good that that we'll remember because we don't know when we're gonna see each other in person next time. You know. Yeah, but see, that's something and, that and, was mutual. Yeah. And my my point is is that wasn't something that Patrick was wanting. To, he wasn't wanting to make a memory. He was sad. That wasn't. <clears throat> you know, nothing about that was for Patrick. Like, that was the part that pissed me off. Hmm. Was she didn't really care if Patrick was into it. She didn't really care if Patrick wanted to wanted to make a memory. It was all about her. Yeah. And in the end, he said okay because he was acquiescing to her. He wasn't agreeing. He wasn't, you know... You know, deciding that this is what he wanted to do, he was just saying, "Okay, I'm gonna be a doormat and do whatever Robin says." Yeah, I yeah. I, I I can see it that way. Uh, it's it's I I I think I'm I think we're kind of seeing a little differently here on that Probably. particular point, but <laughs> but the point is, I mean, yeah, selfish as it is for her. You know, it, it's an understandable. It, it is an understandable selfishness, because you don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, in in even going with your interpretation, saying yeah, you know, she kind of pressured him into it, and he just gave in. To, to put it kind of more bluntly, you know, you know, it it's still understandable on Robin's end because <laughs> she doesn't know. She I mean you never know. They could they could get on that plane and it could crash between Port Charles and wherever the hell they end up going. <laughs> you know, you don't know this. I mean, it could be a death trap and Victor is just trying to lure her into some trap and kill her off. You know, you don't you know, she doesn't know this. Yeah. All she has is his word and that DVD. So you you, you just don't know. So it's understandable <clears throat> whether it makes it whether it makes it right or not, I don't know, but, but you know, hey, yeah. at least at least I can understand it. Now to get all the way back up to <laughs> up to Delia and <laughs> yeah, Ava, because we, we got we've so been, derailed, we've been jumping there. around a lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that happens. Yeah, that happens. And um, so while Carlos is supposed to be trying to kill AJ, Ava's up there at Ryan's bar. And Delia's like, oh shit, tries to get a hold of Sam, but, you know, unfortunately the message comes through while she and Silas are doing the dirty. Because, oh, we have some extra yeah. time, and and blah blah blah, <laughs> so they go at it, and, you know, Sam's phone is on silence. She doesn't get it until they already see Ava there. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And Delia's doing <clears throat> everything she can to get rid of Ava, and then finally she does, and I love the way that she finally got rid of Ava. That was hilarious. Because, you know, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're outside and they're like, ah, ah, how do we how do we get Ava, you know, out of here? If, if Nakamura sees her, if she sees us, you know, she's going to know what's up. And then Delia's like, I've got it. I know exactly how to get rid of her. And so she goes back in and she starts being all nice and, being, and then starts being like, Ava, can I have a loan? Yeah, just a couple thousand. <laughs> Please. And, it, and Ava storms the fuck out, and it was oh my god, it was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, to keep from getting caught by Ava, Sam and Silas just start making out. Yep. <laughs> like you do. Yes, like you do. <coughs> uh, but yeah. So once Ava's out of the way, Delia gets a call and from from somebody with Nakamura's number or whatever. I'm assuming it was his number. And they find out, well, he's not coming f due to reasons of death. Yeah. 
So, so mysterious. So he... And then, yeah. And then, goddamn, yeah, Nathan, Nathan shows Nathan up. Nathan comes in to do it. Because he was the one with Nakamura's cell phone. And he's like, you know, he says that Nakamura uh, OD'd on a medication that he's been taking for years. And so he suspects that Silas was the one. Silas, I tell you! Um, and, it's like, uh, mother, it's like the, motherfucker, where's your fucking proof? And we need concrete proof, not, yeah. not the circumstantial bullshit you keep pulling out your ass. Because even, even and, Scotty yeah. Baldwin is like, uh-uh, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah, um... <laughs> <clears throat> And Delia accidentally let slip that uh, Silas hasn't been with them the whole time because he did take some time off to go visit a patient. And, uh, you know, Nathan's like, well, of course, that must have been the time when he murdered Mr. Nakamura. And uh, Silas is like, you know what? Fuck off. Yeah, go, go, go <laughs> fucking question Ava. And, and Nathan said something that actually got Silas to, to, to think a little bit more, you know, in, in terms of his wife. Nathan's like, you know what, if, it, if I'd been in your position, I'd been doing everything in my power to go see her. And Silas is like, you know what, it's been 20 years, let's go see my fucking wife. Let's go yeah. do this shit. because he's like, you know, at, at, you know, for a while, I did. I, I, tried, I tried everything. And after a while, I gave up because, you know, I didn't have the, the money... Or the power that her family does, <clears throat> and so I just accepted that, you know, they they were never gonna let me see her. And now he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm I need to try and see her. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, the, you know, the, in this storyline, this is another one where the only real twist would be if Silas was guilty. Yeah. Like that would, and honestly, like that would be an amazing. Twist. I don't think I would particularly like it, but it would be genuinely surprising. Yeah, it would. Uh, but at this point, it's uh, it's almost you know, you know, it, it's obviously a, a big conspiracy and blah 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 blah. Ava may or may not be the one who did it. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> it's wow. Uh, it, it's getting thicker and thicker. I, I, I can always yep. see it. Uh, so yeah, where else where else have we not went yet? Um, I know we've uh, there was like a little bit with Nicholas and Britt and Elizabeth, who, who yes. at this point has confessed her love to Nicholas, who's like, "Bitch, I'm moving on." Yep. And and Nicholas and Britt are planning this engagement party. Oh god damn it! You Cassidines in your engagement parties. Oh, somebody always dies at these things. Or at least they had. Oh, really? Or at least they had in my experience. <laughs> Somebody's gonna die, or be horribly Sweet. injured. Sweet. Sweet. That sounds like a party. Yeah, that was like the first time I saw it happen. It was. It was like late '90s. I think it was Stefan be getting engaged to Catherine Bell, and you know Luke and Alexis were trying to take out Helena by you know just loosening you know some 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 iron bars on a parapet and leading her up there. Well, Cass <laughs> went up to the parapet for whatever reason, you know, and, and she leaned up against the thing and she fell. She didn't die. Helena saved her ass to use her as a pawn. And for a while, Stefan had been accused of killing Catherine by pushing her off the parapet or whatever. And then at the trial, you know, you know, Catherine was called in to witness, and the DA at the time was like, "Well, that blows our case out of the goddamn water." <laughs> it's like, yeah, she's well, kind it, of when, a lot. When, when the murder victim shows up to testify in court, um, yeah, you can't really. Yeah, and, and they they kind of gave a hint as to what could possibly happen was right at the time that Kath, right before Catherine had like flatlined, is um, Helena had been in her room. And it turns out Helena gave her something that made her appear dead or whatever, but she really wasn't. So it's the Romeo and Juliet? Something like that, except with less suicide. <laughs> uh, just a skosh less. Yeah, just a little bit less. <laughs> just... Oh dear. 
So I wonder if something like that's going to happen again. I want to say there was another death at, at another one or two of them. I can't remember. I want to say one of them that Emily had died at or something. I know she was killed. I want to say it was during one of those engagement parties. I don't remember. Um, so why does Nicholas want to have one then? Because <laughs> he's a Cassidyne and he likes to show off and be extravagant. Does he though? This is Nicholas. Yeah. Or at the very least, mm-hmm. or, or I think his his reasoning behind it was, you know, he wants all of his friends, all their friends and family, to come and share in this. Which, hey, you know what? It's a reason to throw a goddamn party. Yay! <laughs> Which... Now, you know who I can see throwing a massive goddamn party at Windermere? Fucking Spencer. Yes! That that kid... That kid is fantastic, and he would be like, More ice cream! Go! <laughs> I am the prince! Yes! Oh, yes. I want a petting zoo built right on this, my personal island. (laughs) (laughs) Fetch it for me, father. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) But, yeah, so so they're engaged, planning this engagement party, and Elizabeth comes in, and Britt's like, well, what are you doing at the house? And, And they make up some silly thing or what have you, and Britt goes off, and AJ's like, you know what, you're still my friend. You know, that's all, you know, you're not, it's not like we have to, like, go and, like, you know, it's not like you have to move to fucking Pine Valley or something. You know, you're still my yeah. friend. Ah. <laughs> Which, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how Elizabeth's gonna end up taking it over time, but, you know, hey. Uh, and, of course, there was a bit with, like, uh, Lulu and Sunny, you know, they have their conversation about Ben. I know. <clears throat> Uh, Sonny is is like such the perfect father and grandfather and family guy, and it's 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 really kind of adorable how the uh, the show does that. Like, really, uh, you know, presents him over and over again as this loyal stand up guy who just happens to do a little murder on the side, <laughs> you know, like you do, yeah, like you do, murder, money yeah. laundering, that sort of thing. Although, although from what I'm under, from what I'm remembering and understanding, Sonny does have like a few rules for his own organization. Like yes. one of them, I believe it's as as he's mentioned on screen. You don't go after families unless yes. and, I mean obviously unless it's like self defense or something. But it's like yeah. you don't go after the innocents. You know, like the Jeromes would do. Yeah. You know, you don't go after them. And I believe Sonny also has a thing against drugs. You know, coming in coming in and out of the city. So he, he does not do that shit. If drugs are coming in and out, it's somebody else, and that means it's somebody else trying to get in on his territory. So it's like, yeah, <clears throat> you're gone. <laughs> I don't know what Julian is working in, but who knows? It might be the same. It might just. It might be the same way as Sunny. Who knows? Um, who knows? I, I think there was also a weapons ring that was shut down by Sunny too. So it's, it's like, what does he do? I mean, does he do just like? prostitution, which, okay, that's fine. Um... I don't know. Oh, so it's like, what does he do besides launder money? Because that's... I, I, I think that's gotta be a common thing. Yeah. So you you, you launder the money. And, and not James Bond style, either. Yeah. And, and if anybody gets the exact reference I made on that, I'm going to give you an e-cookie. <laughs> oh... But it, that's that's one of the things about Sonny, though, as a character. You know, he does have this family guy side and his loyal side, and it's very likable. And then, but then you get to his darker side, like like when he was, you know, beating the shit out of Franco for the crime of being anywhere near his son. And and, and yeah. you know, even though Franco is trying, you know, or you know, was trying to you know do better, you know, he, you know, he Sonny doesn't want to hear it. It's yeah. it's like, and it's the same thing with AJ. Sonny doesn't want to believe that AJ could get better because, granted, AJ, he's been around AJ longer and has seen AJ screw up more often, but that doesn't mean AJ cannot get better. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can totally get better. He can, you know, and he's been working on it. And you know what? Up until ELQ was pretty much took right out from under him, he was doing better. 
He was on the wagon. He was building a good relationship with Michael. He was he was doing well. But then shit went down, and well, you know, he fell off the wagon, which is unfortunate. Yeah. And I and you know we you, you know things happened, and of course he threatened Connie, and and didn't murder her, which which I've been saying from the goddamn beginning. Well, and it's I, it's kind of funny because uh, I remember. Uh, you know, us talking about that, and you actually predicted before Connie even died that she was gonna die, and that they were gonna blame AJ, but it was gonna be Ava. Yep. You called it. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, pretty much every single person that I've seen. Like, this whole time has been like, Ava did it! We fucking know! <laughs> yeah, know? I mean... And, uh, but, you know, all we were waiting for was AJ with his magic remember juice, also known as vodka, to, you know, remember that he did not kill Connie and that she was alive when he left and that he saw Ava going back in and, oh, by the way, there was the gun that he dropped. Yeah, there was, there was just this gun there. And speaking of dropped guns, Carlos lost his gun. <laughs> yes. When, when he got smashed in the head. It was like, boom! Uh, and of course, once once Carlos had gotten out of there, AJ didn't know who he was, and AJ automatically assumed Sonny, for obvious reasons. I mean, yes. come on, you know, if, if, you're, if, if a mobster st- pretty much steals your son away from you by forcing you on threat of death and hanging by meat hook, you know, you know, if he, if he steals your son in that way, you're going to be a little bitter and you're going to have a lot of resentment towards him. Duh. Just, just a little, you know, just a little. So of course, you know, Hey, why not? And AJ tends to, AJ forgets or, or he doesn't believe that Sonny would actually keep a promise to Michael. And, and even mm-hmm. Luke is like, nah, dude, no, 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 no. You know, he wouldn't do that. Cause Luke has worked with Sonny. He was he was Sonny's business partner for a while, and you know legitimate business partner, not like mob business partner. Although I th- mm-hmm. they probably did some mob related stuff together. I think they both took down Frank Smith w- back in the early '90s. I know I know Luke was there and he in and I think he got the final shot in, but I think Sonny helped him. Um, but even Luke's like, no, nah, dude, Sonny Sonny wouldn't pull that kind of bullshit. He promised somebody. That he wouldn't kill you, he's going to do it. He, he's going to stick to that. And, mm. you know, so Luke goes off to see him, which I didn't see Luke show up to talk to Sonny. But after the cops arrived and had a talk with AJ, um, <laughs> Dante sure showed up. And Dante's like, yeah, um, yeah, did you really kill A? Did you really have, try to have AJ killed? You know, and I, and I believe that's where it was kind of left there. Yeah, well, and Sonny's like, no, I didn't try to have AJ killed. I support whoever did try to kill him, and if you do find out who it was, let me know so that I can thank them. <laughs> yeah, it was like, dude, man. <clears throat> uh, I, I will admit, I, I will admit that that the way, you know, especially the way Sonny treats AJ, like, like I was saying, you know, AJ... He was getting better. And and every time he gets knocked down, it's like most of the rest of the characters will just, you know, keep pounding on him, you know, and being being more and more down on him. And and, and his family, they're slightly supportive, I guess, as supportive as the Quartermains mm. can be towards him, or at least Tracy. But... Yeah. But, you know, I mean... But, you know, I mean, he, he's... He's, he's, go- he's been going through a rough time. I mean... And Sonny, I, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was Sonny, I think he was mentioning that that AJ had no remorse. You know, I, I think it was Ava who told him that AJ had no remorse yes. for killing him. And that should have set off Sonny right there because he's known him a long time. And while AJ may hate him, he, he's, he, he's forgetting that AJ also is human. You know, he may he may have tried to yeah. dodge responsibility a lot in his life, but I don't think AJ is heartless. He's never been heartless. Not completely. 
Well, Sonny is also a little bit clouded by grief, too. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's just... Oh, uh, this is not going to end well. Especially since AJ remembered and it's like, oh shit, Ava. And instead of yeah. doing the smart thing and telling Dante to go after Ava, he goes after Ava himself. Well, he was also drunk because, again, vodka is AJ's magic remember juice and also makes him do stupid things like go confront someone he knows is has murdered at least one person uh, when he's drunk out of his mind and not able to defend himself. But AJ's kind of a dumbass that way. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. <clears throat> So yeah, so that that was that was one of the the cliffhangers was AJ confronting Ava. I'm trying to remember what the others were. Let's see. There was also you know the confrontation with Sunny, and and of course Rick and Julian were were making phone calls. Then and, and of course, like I was mentioning, the editing is set up to where it seemed like they were going to call each other, you know, like one was going to call the other. Yeah. Or something like that. So this is that's another one where you know the uh, <clears throat> the real twist would be if they weren't working together, mm-hmm. and it was someone else. Mm-hmm. Which so which I'll admit I'd be a little disappointed if it was Rick, but but you know hey you got him back, you know why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and oh there was one was one point where I wanted to touch on with uh, TJ and Molly and all of them that I didn't earlier. Because uh, TJ ended up going, you know, the next morning, TJ told Sonny and, and Sean you know, ab- about Julian and what he had suggested to him. Yes. And at the same time, TJ told Sean exactly what went down. Sean was a lot calmer. You know, yeah. He was like, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. He was like, you know, whatever. Meh. Well, and he and he's like it, basically his, his uh, only disappointment was that TJ felt you know like he had to lie, <clears throat> and you know he's like you know, it's okay you you can tell me the truth I you know I support you you know I th- I think you and Molly they are good kids and you know and you think you were being smart so <laughs> yeah and and then of course Sean goes over to Alexis's. You know, to, to, at first to talk to her, you know, just say, hey, you know, I'm going to talk to Alexis. And there's Julian. Yeah. And there and there goes his rage, because, you know, hi, you threatened my boy. I'm going to beat the shit yeah. out of you. And it's, it's like, and, and, you know, there's that great timing again, because, uh, you know, Julian did provoke him. Mm-hmm. And because he's like, what are you going to do? You can't kill me. You know, I can basically I can threaten your kid all you want, and you can't kill me because Sonny won't let you. And uh, Sean's like, "Well, you can uh, donate, still donate bone marrow if you have this shit kicked out of you." <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and uh, and that's when Alexis walks in is right when Sean has his fist raised, and uh, they both kind of go back and forth, revealing, you know. Julian trying to, you know, tell Alexis all about how, you know, Sean was totally going to kill Carlos, uh, and all he did was tell TJ to do his civic duty, uh, and, uh, you know, Sean going, coming back with, you know, he did threaten TJ, you know, is this really a man that you can trust? Yeah, but can she trust either of them? That's the thing. Yeah, and so... Because <laughs> it's not like Sean is perfect. I mean, Sean has lied to her before, has he not? Yeah, but, well, I don't think I don't think Sean is uh, trying to get back with Alexis at this point. He's just like, you know what? You can't trust Julian. You you cannot trust Julian. I think he's just looking out for her at this point. Yeah. So, and then that's always a thing, too. Oh, God. So... Mm. Well, there that went. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it, it's 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 interesting what's going to happen this next week. Um, because as we know, Silas is going to be on his way to see his wife. Hopefully, it, it's hopefully. like yeah, and and we're going to see the confrontation between AJ and Ava, 
And that should have happened more like this months ago. <laughs> I mean, I understand they want to, like, you know, do some build-up and everything, but come on, if we can guess... I mean, if I was able to call it this soon... You know, if, if I was able to call it before Connie's blood even hits the floor... Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, gotta, that, that's something to work on. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> Just crazy, crazy, mm -hmm. crazy things. Um, let's see. I'm I'm looking forward to what they will do with the engagement party and whether or yes. not Victor will be there. Because hmm. there's nothing says that Victor couldn't just drop Robin off and come back to town for er, every now and then. That's true. Because <laughs> you know, hey, and I'm curious to see where this place is if they show it. You know, yeah, that's Robin. You know, he, they, they might not show it for a while, but possibly until they're ready to bring her back. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. I, you know it, I don't know. I really still feel like Patrick and Robin should have broken up over this, but that's just me. I'm kind of a bitch. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> And, oh, Emma! Emma! Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's just poor Emma. But, yeah, yeah, but, you know, it's more important that Jason's son get his father back than it is for Emma to have her mother there. I mean, that's just the way it is, right? Because it's all about Robin, and this is what Robin wants. Yeah. Which, I, as I've said before... I think when it comes to going and and helping Jason, her friend, it's like it, it's basically from what I'm seeing it is, you know, he's done a lot of stuff for her. He saved her life, you know, in in way in ways that Patrick, well, he wasn't in the picture at the time, so he couldn't have, you know. And while she loves Patrick and she will come back to Patrick and to Emma. That doesn't mean that Jason should just be written off if there's a chance of saving his life at the same time. And that, that, that I think that's where I'm seeing it, where I'm seeing Robin. Yeah, despite you know the actions being off and the actions not being good or, or, or cool or anything, I, that's where her motivation is. It's like, you know what, he is my friend. I need to help my friend and help him and his family. My family still has me, even though I will be wherever I'm going to be in the world. I will be able to come back to them, and I can tell them, yes, I will be back. You know, Jason didn't, you know, just like Robin didn't a couple of years ago, she didn't have that luxury then. Everybody thought she was dead, just like everybody thinks Jason is dead now. So, neither of them had that luxury. And, you know, with her going off to help him, she's saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back, I'm going to go help somebody, which is true. You know, Patrick is the only one outside of Victor and Obrecht who know the truth. And, you know, I, I see it as, yes, they, they wrote it in a way that made Robin look worse than what she actually is. But I think overall it's a good thing that she is going to basically to help her friend who had saved her life I don't even know how many times over the years. You know. I don't know. Like, I I understand the practicality aspect of it from, you know, a casting standpoint. Right. Uh, especially since they obviously really want to bring back... Uh, they really want to bring back Jason. They really want to br bring back Helena. They really want to bring back Stavros. I get that. But, like, within, within the internal world of, um, you know... Uh, of this universe, uh, what she's doing is horrible. Yeah. Uh, and if she had any brains or, you know, any, you know, any morals, uh, she would either let Jason die and let, you know, everybody who loved him continue to move on, which they already have started doing. Yeah. Uh, or she would fight to bring Patrick and Emma with her. Yeah. Which, that is one of those things when it comes to somebody leaving whose character is in that position. I mean, when Robin wasn't married or what have you, sure, she could just come and go, whatever, you know? 
but you know, the writers made it a little less complicated by having Robin get married over the years. Yeah. Uh, and and somebody was like, somebody in one of the comment threads I was reading was like, well, why don't they just recast her? You know, they could recast her. They recast Lucky however many times. They recast Carly a couple of times. What about what him? Well, well, not Robin or whatever. And it's like, Robin... You don't recast Robin for the same reason nobody's going to recast Luke when Tony Geary passes away. They, they've... The actor and the character are practically, you know... You, you can't think of Kim McCullough without thinking of Robin Scorpio Drake. You just can't do it. You know, yeah. they were able to recast Carly when they did because Carly hadn't been around that long. Now, if they tried to recast Carly, there would be so much of an uproar because Laura Wright has been in the role of Carly for so long that people are used to that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's the same thing with, with Alexis or Sonny or characters that have been in, you know, actors who have been in their roles for so long. Yeah. It's like, you can never recast Anna Devane <clears throat> or Robert Scorpio. Hell, they didn't even recast Victor Cassidy. They could have. They didn't have to bring back the original actor, but they did. They could have recast him, but they didn't. Because that, you know, it's it's one of those characters that's like, yeah, you know what, this is, this is uh, I'm going to use the term legacy character. Because these, these are characters that, these, these looks of these characters been ingrained in the show and in the general audience's mind for so long that recasting them just would not be right yeah you know i mean i mean i mean there are still people i mean even lulu um i mean i know when she was um aged you know they 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 grew to like the girl that she was that was playing her before i want to say it was not even 10 years before they recast lulu with emma rylan who was playing Mm -hmm. her now and there are still people bitching, like, oh, I like the old Lulu better. Which... I've seen that, and I'm like, get over it. <laughs> it's like, you know what, they're both great actresses, so, yeah. meh. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's just not gonna happen. Uh, so, so yeah, when it, when it comes to somebody as beloved and as... And who who the but the line between the actress and the role are, are just so in sync with each other that it's hard to separate one from the other. You know you, that's not a role you want to recast. You know you you just don't want to do it. Yeah. Oh. But on that note, we're gonna have to get out of here for this week. <laughs> um, we will catch you next week. Oh, oh I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully we won't be doing these in the middle of the week because it's it's been throwing things off. We didn't we couldn't do one uh, when I wanted to because I was sick and then we had like a wedding this past weekend, so it was just pain in the ass to get everything going. Stupid um, life getting in the way of our nerdiness. Jeez. Exactly. Oh, so um, and no, it was not my wedding. It was my cousin's wedding. So. So my cousin got married. It was great, and and their vows were equally nerdy and geeky. You know, he is her Superman. She is his Lois Lane. Aww, <laughs> that was that was that was a nice touch. Uh, and my dad officiated, and he and he ha- had to do pretty much, you know, refer to them simil- similarly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. Oh, but uh, again, thank you guys for listening. If you want to catch me on the social medias, you can catch me on Twitter at gomer 21 X. You can even find me on Tumblr, which I now have, at gomer 21 X. <laughs> and also you can catch me, catch my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And by the way, speaking of Tumblr, both, um, you know, all of my main shows and the actual site itself, uh, you know, Thespian Talk, Constructive Deconstruction, Port Charlie Podcast, and of course my site, RT Gomer Productions. They all have their own little Tumblr blogs as well. I need to try and keep them up to date more often. I know the the uh, site Tumblr updates automatically along with everything else when something posts, so you know you can keep an eye on that and you'll get all the updates from the site. Yay! All the updates! Yes, and if you, if you like the show and you want to help support you know, monetarily or whatever, you can always donate directly, or if you if you just want to pledge something every month, uh, I do have a Patreon page, Gomer21XX, on uh, Patreon there. 
Um, yeah, it's it's uh, you know a monthly thing. If you donate twenty dollars a month or more, you get some ad space. And and I'm still working with the, the uh, one person who has done that. Uh, we've, we've it's just been you know her her life has been busy, and then you got my life going the way it is. So it's just it's basically we just need to sync up and and nail everything down. Um, <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, so you know you'll get ad space. For twenty dollars a month or more, through pay if you donate, uh, not donate, but pledge twenty dollars a month or more on on uh, Patreon to me, and uh, you know ad space, and it's cheaper than pretty much everywhere else I've looked. So you're you're getting a good deal, and of course you also get to listen to and watch these shows early, which that's the ten dollar thing. Which some people will be like, well, why don't I just wait a day? Well, not everything comes out the next day. <laughs> oh, so um. So, yeah, that, that's my whoring out for this thing. Uh, where can we find you, Namio? <laughs> uh, you can also find me on Tumblr. My Tumblr is Namio's Corner. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous RTGomer.com. What? And you can also find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Yay! And if, if you don't want to type in the thing or whatever, you know, you go up to the link on the top of my on the top of my site, you know, go to that buy our stuff, there should be a link to there as well. Yep. So, uh, anyways, thank you guys for listening and listening to me ramble and and, <laughs> and all of that and, and all of that, so, uh, and being redundant, too. That, that's another thing. <laughs> redundant uh, all over again. Yes! <laughs> uh, so, again, we will catch you guys next week, and until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.